Hey, look here, guys. We got a new toy to play with. Hey, stick around and let's see what this Presto Indoor Electric Smoker is all about. He's a bad beast on that barbecue on the grill of the smoker. He knows just what to do. He's a bad beast on that barbecue. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bad Beast Barbecue. Hey, today we're going to be looking at the Presto Indoor Electric Smoker. Nope, this is not a sponsored video. I purchased this off of Amazon myself uh, two days ago and it came in today. Uh, it was regularly $99 on sale for $75, okay? Uh, the one thing that I uh, don't like about cooking barbecue in a crock pot is that, it, one, you don't get that smoky flavor, okay? Uh, just miss that smoky flavor that you get from an authentic smoker or from put, doing it out there low and slow in a dual zone grill. Uh, you just don't get that smoky uh, flavor. And uh, sometimes the meat loses its texture. Like if you put some ribs in a crock pot and then you gotta slide them under the broil to get them uh, textured up or get them kind of tacked up. So uh, we're gonna see what this is all about. This uh, indoor electric smoker is supposed to be able to cook. Uh, you don't put any water in it when you're smoking food and then it doubles as a crock pot so you can put liquid in it okay so i'm interested in seeing just how well this works and if it doesn't work well then we'll just send it back okay um it's uh supposed to work indoors so the lid is supposed to have a gasket around it to keep the smoke from uh, infiltrating through the room and it has three smoke modes supposedly uh, you can cold smoke hot smoke and do a combo smoke for larger pieces of meat and uh what I like the idea about it, it can use wood chips or it can use pellets. So that should be interesting. Okay, so so let's break this bad open and let's see what's in the box. All right, guys, so we got everything out of the box. Uh, so this is all it came with. It came with an instruction manual. Okay, it came with a smoking cup with a lid on it. All right, it came with three racks and the racks are stackable. So you can stack your meat, nuts, cheese, vegetables, whatever you're trying to smoke, you can stack them inside of the, the in, indoor smoker, okay? And it came with a internal pot, and then the crock, the, the smoker itself is a pot in itself, okay? I was wondering how they were gonna go about the business of smoking or lighting up pellets and wood chips, and at the same time allow you to be able to put water in here without damage to the electrical piece but if you look down in the bottom here there's a coil that's attached to the bottom that provides the heat in order to warm or cook or heat or burn the wood chips and the, or the pellets okay and then if you want to cook with it crock pot style you can take this and you can put that in there and then you can cook crock pot style okay they have a water line on here so You'll know how, how much water you can put in this bad boy, okay? So, so how we plan on testing this bad boy? Well, the best test is America's favorites, okay? Let's do some spare ribs, all right? So we got some spare ribs upstairs thawed out. We're going to go ahead and bring them down. We're going to prep them up right quick. We're going to only use some uh, SPG on them, and we're going to uh, put them in here with some, I don't know, either some hickory smoke or... Uh, maybe something a little bit different. I got a variety of chips in the back, so we'll figure it out when I come back. And we're going to put this thing through the pace, and we're going to see if it really smokes and cooks ribs indoors-wise to be on par with what you get outside. Okay, so hey, let's get to prepping. All right, guys, so we're ready to prep our ribs. Uh, I split my ribs in half because the entire rack won't fit inside of the indoor smoker. So we're going to prep these right quick. I'm just going to hit them with a little bit of olive oil just to help the rub stick. And um, you can use uh, straight salt and pepper or SPG or whatever your, your favorite rub is. I was gonna use SPG, but then I ended up pulling out my Bad Beast Barbecue uh, rub, if I can get the top off of it. So then this is the rub that I make. I got a recipe for this. I don't want to give it out just yet because I am trying to 
maybe one day go to market with this and it's still in the testing phase so we're gonna hit this with some of the bad beast rub like I say use whatever rub that you fancy <laughs> if you wouldn't use that word fancy all right we're gonna hit both of these all right And I'm hoping this uh, device works out. Like I said, this is first time me using this. I saw it on the, on the internet last night, and I saw it on Amazon. And I was like, man, I'm going to try this. Uh, since the old Shaq thing didn't work out, I'll put an iCard up here so you guys can see my review of the Shaq induction cooker. <laughs> yeah, that, that one what, didn't pan out very well. So, All right, so I got these seasoned up. And so now we're going to go ahead and stick them in the indoor smoker. All right, guys, so we got our ribs basically all seasoned up, and now it's ready to go inside of the indoor smoker, okay? So this here is the smoking cup, all right? And you're supposed to put this inside here around the, the coil, like so, all right? Make, with the holes to the top. All right, now it says that if you're going to be cooking for two hours or less, you fill it halfway. If you're going to be cooking for more than two hours, you fill it up all the way, okay? So we're going to fill this up all the way the best that we can and these particular wood chips are um, from the wild wood grilling company the guys sent me a bunch of wood chips and stuff uh, a while ago and we still got plenty of it and so wild wood grilling has some fantastic products out there so check them out if you are interested okay all right, so we got our wood chips in there. Now, they say you also can use wood pellets in here, and uh, I think wood pellets would be a little bit easier than the wood chips, to be honest with you. But you don't have to wet them, so we'll go with that. So this is mesquite from Wildwood Grilling. So, all right, so we got the wood chips in there. I'm going to put the lid on, like so, and we're ready to rock and roll. All right, so we got the base rack that we're going to put in first. It's got the handles for easy lifting. Just sit that in here like that and let it rest on the sides like so. All right. And then we put our first rack in. Now, I'm going to put it with the bones down. And we'll see how that works out. Let's adjust this. All right. So we got the first rack in there. And then we're going to put a second rack for the second piece. All right. So get that on top there like so. And we're going to put this in here bone side down. All right, so we got a whole rack of ribs, uh, St. Louis style spare ribs in here. We're going to put the lid on top of this. And the lid fits pretty snug, looks like. Sure does. So keep all that smoke from, from eking out. We'll see if that is an actual good seal or not. And it has a relief valve right here in case it pressurizes or has some type of suction where the lid won't come off, okay? So we're going to do a combo smoke for four hours, like the book says, and we're going to see how it turns out. So, hey, I'll see you when it finishes. Don't go nowhere. All right, guys, so we're done with this cook. These cooked for four hours, and uh, there's no temperature set setting on here, so I'm not quite sure at what temperature it cooked the ribs, okay? Um, so we put it on combo smoke and we let it roll. I think I'm going to put an internal thermometer in there next time I utilize it to see what internal temperature it's actually cooking at, okay? But let's go ahead and see what these bad boys look like. And that released it. Let's see what our ribs look like. Yeah, they, they look okay. It, nice pullback on the bone. It's not as color specific as I would have liked um, so now the one on the bottom seems to be a little bit have a little bit more color on it than the one on top and I assume that's because it was closer to the smoke actually the bottom of it is kind of overdone because it was closer to the heating element okay so this is gonna be interesting all right, so let me give you a close-up look at these. All right, guys, so here are the, the ribs. As you can see, 
This one doesn't have a whole lot of color, and this one is the one that was on the top rack. It's okay. The one that's on the bottom rack, the closest to the the smoke box, you can see right there, it's got a little burn there. I mean, that's just overdone and charred right there. You flip them over, they got they have some decent color. But I guess the proof will be in the taste and the texture, okay? All right, so let's cut into these and have a taste test. So there's a, a whole lot of liquid in the bottom of this uh, this cooker here. So it must have been from the fat from the meat that you're cooking. I'm just wondering if, uh, if that's going to damage the heating element or the coil at all. So uh, I'll have to check that out and see, all right? Let's flip this these over on the bone side and see what's happening here. I mean, they're almost overdone, to be honest with you. So, and even though I didn't add any liquid to it, all the liquid that was in here, it almost seemed like these got steamed more than anything else, okay? There's not much of a smoke ring on the one on the top rack. They almost smell like they got too much smoke. All right, then, let's have a taste. Yeah, I think they got just a tad too much smoke. Of course, I use mesquite, so that is a little bit heavier wood than you would use normally on some pork ribs. So, but definitely takes the smoke flavor. I just not sure I like the texture. The texture is kind of soft, um, almost like you would get if you had done them in an actual crock pot, except that the smoke flavor is there. So, so I'm not sure if this is going to be uh, a viable option to make ribs in versus doing them on a smoker outside unless you it, uh, it's snowing or raining and you definitely just have to have ribs so i mean they're tender they're delicious i just think it got a tad too much smoke and the texture for the ones on the top rack um it's a little soft for me okay let's try the ones that were right next to the smoker box that got a little overdone. Now these have a little bit different texture to them. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so texture wise, these are a little bit more acceptable. However, so close to the smoker box, they got a little burnt, okay? Um, there's no way to set a temperature on here. You just gotta do combo smoke or what have you. Uh, I do like the texture on these though because they're not as soft or tender or uh, or moisture content. The moisture content in these are much, much more than the ones in here because these are probably at the top and the steam from the liquid that gathered in the bottom gathered at the top and probably steamed these more than these cooked at the bottom. So they're not bad. Maybe with a little tweaking with a little lighter wood, it might work out. But I, I don't see how the ones on the top shelf is going to change in its uh, in the way it's done. So I may have to uh, try to manipulate a few things in this thing to see if I can get it to work a little bit better. So a couple more things that uh, can, uh, it did have a really nice seal on it. At first, I was uh, wanting to have like those clip clips see uh those clips on the side like some crock pots do where you can clip the lid shut to make sure no smoke escaped okay but very little smoke this escaped we can smell the the aroma of the smoke but no smoke itself from what i saw now when it first started up and it got up to temperature the whole thing was full of smoke so that was that was good so it does apply the smoke to whatever you're putting in here it's just that does it cook it to an acceptable level that you're willing to um accept <laughs> so um i don't know i'll have to think about that so so far i do like this the, the smoke that it infuses in the food as far as uh ribs go i'm not sure if i'll be doing ribs in it anytime soon unless i can perfect the method um it might be okay for a small pork butt uh, but a small pork butt is going to provide much more liquid in the bottom of this than these this one slab of rib did okay this might be uh more suited for cold smoking for nuts eggs cheese and things of that nature or some small stuff like uh, salmon uh or things of that nature so um 
we'll keep utilizing it, keep making videos with it over the next week, and we'll see exactly how well it continues to do and whether or not I'll give this a passing mark or not, okay? Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Hey, if you guys are interested in uh, any of the wood chips that we use, this is from Wildwood Grilling. These guys got some excellent products out there. They got chips, they got chunks, they got planks, they got all kind of stuff. So check them out. I'll put a link in the description block, okay? And like I said before, this was not a, um, a sponsored video. We bought this off of Amazon. So, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can always send it back, I guess. So, but anyway, hey, like we always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if it's fire, then damn it, there just might be a barbecue there. Hey, as always, hey, we'll see you guys around the smoker.